God, praise God, and let the people of God say amen, amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry. I believe your week has been good, and we just thank God for bringing us together again. Now, last week, uh, we discussed, or we started, um, on spiritual termites, and it was titled, Identifying Spiritual Termites. Um, and like I told you, I said, we're going to do this for three weeks. So this is going to be our second week, so we're going to be going into the second part of that topic. But, but, but before we start, you know, you know by now, we've got to pray, all right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you, we honor you, for you are good and there is none like you. Oh, Lord, you have started teaching us about hidden things, spiritual things from last week concerning spiritual termite. Father, we pray that you will deepen your work in our heart even in this study and through this study, and at the end, O oh Lord, that we will be better for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we started spiritual termites last week, identifying spiritual termites. And I defined termites, or spiritual termites, as negative spirits manifesting in physical behaviors of people. They appear harmless or commonplace, but they have devastating spiritual implications in and on people's lives. And of course, our case study last week was Sambalat and Tobiah. They portrayed the characteristics of termites, but the only difference was they were human beings, and that puts them in the class of spiritual termites because every evil that Sambalat and Tobiah did, it was because some spirits were behind it, making them to do those evil things. Uh, so we talked about that. They appeared friendly to Nehemiah, uh, but they are sinister motive. They, they were sinister ministers. Uh, of the devil to destroy Nehemiah and the project that Nehemiah uh, chaired to do. And uh, we also discussed that uh, spiritual termites can come in both positive and negative uh, forms. Uh, they, they, they may disguise, that's covert. They may not disguise and just come straight up and expecting you to buy into the uh, negative uh, actions, which is the calculative part of spiritual termites. Uh, we talked about their characteristics uh, that when you see people behaving in a certain way, how you can discern uh, they, are, they are corrosive, they walk covertly, they form colony, they are constructive, but in a destructive way. They are calculative, they are catastrophic if unchecked. So that was just a summary of what we did last week. If you missed it, go back to the video, all right? Today, we are going to be talking about the importance of identifying spiritual termites. See, last week, we talked about how to identify them. So today, why do we need to be able to identify spiritual termites. And our case study would be Nehemiah, the, the man himself. Uh, Nehemiah, a very fine guy. And um, our scripture text is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I will start from 7, following, and I will stop at 8. 1 Corinthians 14, 7 to 8. Even lifeless instruments, like the flute or the harp, must play the notes clearly, or no one will recognize the melody. And if the burglar doesn't sound a clear call, how will the soldiers 
know they are being called to battle. Having known how to identify a spiritual termite when one is around you from our last week lesson, or you see one popping up in your own life, you see, what is the benefit? Why, sh why, why should you need to know? Why do you have to know? Let's see. The first reason why you need to know a spiritual termite is to avoid the quality of your spiritual life from being diluted. I'm telling you. If Nehemiah had allowed Sambalat and Tobiah to build the wall with him, that would have compromised the spiritual integrity of Nehemiah and the building project. That assignment before God, that would have compromised it. Why? If you go back to the book of, uh, to the book of Deuteronomy uh, 23 verse 3, uh, there, God told the children of Israel, no Moabites or Ammonites will come into the assembly of Israel, the assembly of the Lord, or their descendants up to the 10th generation. In fact, if you go to Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, we, we are not reading all that. Uh, it actually says they should never come into the congregation of Israel. It's a long story, like I told you uh, from last week. Uh, but they, they, these were enemies of Israel. They were sworn enemies of Israel. So God said, no, I don't want you mingling with them. Don't marry them. Don't let them marry your, your kids. Uh, so if Nehemiah was not discerning, he would have taken Sambalat and Tobiah, and that would have destroyed the spiritual integrity of that assignment. But Nehemiah knew the right thing, so he was selective. So he told Sambalat and Tobiah, you have no right, you have no inheritance or memorial in Jerusalem. And that, that, got, that ticked them off, you see. So the same thing for us, if we fail to identify spiritual termite through their behaviors, guess what? You will be taking all kinds of people, ideas. I mean, you you will be jumped up spiritually. Uh, it, I, it, I wish I could give you some examples because I suffered from that. But I thank God for deliverance. So, uh, And that's why I always tell people, read your Bible. Read your Bible. So when a phony come around you, you will know. You will know. Failure for a believer to mature and see what they are supposed to see by being selective, we see that a believer miss out on kingdom's responsibilities and privileges. Why? Because if you're just taking everything that people bring to you spiritually, you are not different from a baby Christian, immature Christian believer. And as a result, God won't be able to commit great things into your hands. You will just be like a spiritual child. You see, like a baby, a, a spiritual baby. Let's go to Galatians 4, chapter 1, uh, 4, verse 1 to 2. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. Now I say that the hair, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, you see. Though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards or trustees in our language until the time appointed by the Father. You see, what that is telling you is taking from a natural uh, uh, situation when you have a little child, an underage kid, uh, but the parents, they left huge estate for him or her, uh, nobody is going to allow that child to start, <clears throat> excuse me, using those, that inheritance. Why? Because he or she doesn't have enough maturity to handle that. So they will appoint a trustee or trustees until that child is mature enough 
to be able to manage that estate is the same thing spiritually. If you are not selective concerning the people that comes into your life, people that you let speak into your life, people, uh, ideas that you take on, you are not different from a spiritual being. And God will be able to commit solid kingdom assignments into your hands. And you will miss out on the privileges, all right? To be selective is a godly wisdom of offense that puts the enemy's ugly wisdom on defense. Let me rewind. Okay? To be selective is a godly wisdom of offense that puts the enemy's ugly wisdom on defense. You don't want to be defensive when you're on the battlefield against the devil. No, you go on the offense, offensive. Moving on. To avoid a journey to success, to, to success from being derailed. That's why you need to know. That's why uh, it's important for you to know spiritual time. If you don't know, they will derail you. I'm telling you, they will derail you. Nehemiah refused to honor Sambalat and Tobias invite to a secret meeting because he was focused on the assignment of the wall building that he came to do in Jerusalem. You see, he left Babylon for Jerusalem for a reason. It was to build a wall not to come and attend meetings, no. Had Nehemiah met with these spiritual termites, these clowns, Sambalat and Tobiah, he would have been busy, come closer, settling quarrels with them. He would have been busy settling one thing or the other. They would have derailed him. You see, knowing spiritual termites, Stop us from investing in the wrong areas of life. When you know somebody is a spiritual termite, you won't let them waste your time. I'm telling you. You let them know. I don't have time to waste. Get out. Thank you. And don't come back. Because you have somewhere to go. You have a destiny to fulfill. Somebody who has no destiny to fulfill, going about from house to house, gossiping, you don't have time for that. Tell them where the door is. You see, this will equally avoid us from finishing life where God never intended for us to finish. Lest we look back on life with regret. You don't want to regret, right? When it's all said and done, look at Samson. Look at Samson. He did not die a Nazarite, even though God sent an angel. There were a handful of people in the Bible that an angel had to be sent to predict their, their, their birth, including our Lord Jesus Christ. Samson was one of those few people throughout the Bible. And the angel said, he will be, be a Nazarite from birth unto death, unto, unto his death. But guess what? He did not die a Nazarite. No. He was derailed, you see, because Samson had no regard for his spiritual integrity or for his spiritual life. And he had this gross indiscipline. He finished his life as a powerless, blind, shamed, shackled grinder in prison in the enemy's territory. That was not God's plan for Samson. Samson was once a terror to the Philistines, the, the enemy nation. Just Samson, he terrorized all of them. But guess what? When Samson became derailed, he was tortured and terrorized until his death. That's what spiritual termites can do. I'm telling you. Let's go into the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 28. Judges 16, 28. Then Samson, watch this. This is one of the worst prayers in the Bible. I'm telling you. It was a prayer of regret. Then Samson called to the Lord, Judges 16, 28, saying, O Lord God, 
Remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray. Just this once, oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines from my two eyes. That doesn't sound like a prayer of thank you, God, is it? It's a prayer of regret. They took out his eyes. They gouged them out. That's what the enemies can do. You need to know who those spiritual termites are through their behaviors or when you see some behaviors coming out of your own life and they are not biblical. You need to know because you don't want your journey to success, to be derailed. To have spiritual discipline is to foster life trailing and install life blazing you want to be on top right it's very necessary to know spiritual termites moving on it's important to know spiritual termites so as to avoid a journey to success from being delayed you see in Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 4, of course we are not going to read it. Nehemiah said, Sambalat and Tobiah sent message uh, to him to, to meet uh, in a meeting, how many times? Four times. Can you believe that? Four times. But each time he responded the same way. I can't leave what I'm doing to come to meet you guys. I'm sorry. Can't come to you. I'm working. I am doing a great job for God here, so I can't stop the work of God to come to you. You see, if we don't know spiritual termites, we may attend to everything that comes our way, thus dragging our journey. Um, I, when I got to this point, I remember Pastor Billy Graham. I once watched uh, his interview, and somebody asked, and said, what is your regret looking back uh, uh, 60 years of ministry worldwide? Before the, uh, the uh, reporter finished asking question, Billy Graham said that I took on so many invitations, that I honored so many invitations, especially the ones that have no uh, eternal value. He said, there were so many places I went that looking back now, I shouldn't have. And I, I, I held on to what he said, you see. If you attend to everything, this may lead to experiencing less than God's intended perfect plan for you in some areas of your life. The spiritual termite of the spirit of murmuring, complaining, whining, denied the adult generation of Israel, the entry into Canaan. They had to settle for a wilderness life. That's not what God told Moses. When God said to Moses to go to Pharaoh, God didn't say go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh uh, that my people should come and live for 40 years in the wilderness. No. God said to Moses, I want you to bring them out of Egypt and bring them into Canaan land. End of story. But these people, they dragged it on because they would not destroy the spirit of murmuring, the spiritual torment of murmuring, you see. And God has great plans for all his children. What is dragging your own journey, huh? What termites are in your life that are dragging you, that you are attending to when you are supposed to be attending to the assignment that God has placed before you? You want to settle that score today. If not, you may be doing a um, wilderness journey for 40 years. And God doesn't want that for you. Let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 30. This is God speaking out to the children of Israel when he's had it with their madness. He said, not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and uh, Joshua, the son of Nun. You see, to settle for less is to be blessed for less. 
You can't be attending to everybody. You can't be attending to everything. You need to know what those spiritual termites are so you can be focused. To settle for less is to be blessed for less. Now, so far, what have we done? Why do we need to be able to identify spiritual termites? Number one, to avoid a spiritual quality from being diluted. Secondly, to avoid a journey to success from being derailed. Thirdly, to avoid a journey to success from being delayed. See? Now, let's go to the next one. You, you need to know spiritual termites to avoid your reputation. And this is very critical. Okay? There is no amount of money that can buy this. So listen up. To avoid your reputation and your spiritual dignity from being dented. Have you seen a dented car in an accident? Have you seen it? You see how beautiful it is? It's not beautiful, right? No, it's not. If you don't want your reputation and your spiritual integrity to be dented like a wrecked car, listen up. Sambalat and Tobiah hired Shemaiah. Shemaiah was a prophet, all right? But in, in this case, he, he was induced. He was induced, he was bribed to go and prophesy. I always tell you, be careful of prophets. Uh, to go and prophesy to Nehemiah. But it was a fake prophecy, you see. What they wanted to do was to scare Nehemiah Perhaps Nehemiah will leave the job, the, the project he was doing, and flee back to uh, Babylon. Let's see um, Nehemiah 6.13. He says, for this reason, Shemaiah was hired that I should be afraid and not that way and sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me, you see. Spiritual termites want you to make mistakes so that you can carry the consequences of those mistakes like an extra luggage. They are not there to help you. They don't like you. Oh, no. David's inability, and this is a classic example, to identify the spiritual termite of idleness in his own life. You see, when I'm saying spiritual termite, don't think about your mother-in-law or your brother-in-law, or the lady working next to you. No, start from your own, your inner self. The behaviors that are ungodly, they are capable of doing this to you too. Okay? So, in this case, nobody did this to David. David did it to himself. He started from the inside of David. He became an idol. And David didn't know that was a spiritual termite. And that led him to the case of Bathsheba and all the consequences that followed, you see. And that case stuck with David for the rest of his life. He dented his reputation. Can you believe that? You know what? It was so bad. His reputation was so dented that David's firstborn, his oldest child, Amnon, when he committed rape, guess what? David couldn't even say anything to him. Do you know why? You, 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 you can do the math. Because he, 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 he will feel like a hypocrite to not tell his son off for, for raping his sister, which is gross, really. But he couldn't say anything. The Bible said David was quiet because he remembered his own, you know, probably that reminded him of how he took another man's wife and messed with her, you know. So, spiritual termites are out to dent your reputation and your spiritual integrity. Let's read the book of 1 Kings, chapter 15, verse 5. And you need to see the sterling uh, pink report, if you can call it. I mean, the summary of David's life. But when it got to this section, it's really sad. 
It says, David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that God commanded David all the days of his life. Except, you see, underscore that, except. That's what spiritual termites do to people, especially children of God. Except. They want you to have that except, that behavior that you think nobody knows is in the closet of your heart. It how to destroy you one day to put except on your epitaph. You see, in the matter of Uriah, the Hittite, you don't want that, do you? To compromise spiritual integrity is to paralyze natural integrity. Listen, let me say that again. To compromise spiritual integrity is to paralyze your natural integrity. If you are doing some stuff in the closet and you think nobody sees you, the devil is just waiting for you. Because he knows he's going to mess you up publicly. So if you are doing something privately that is ungodly, you better fall on your face before God and deal with it. Because that thing will wait until it destroys you and shames you publicly. And God doesn't want that for you, okay? Moving on. To avoid God's promise to us from being denied. Say what? Yeah. If you don't deal with spiritual termites, what God has promised you that he will do, guess what? God doesn't change his mind, but you can cause you to be denied of God's promise. How did that happen? Let's see. Had Nehemiah agreed to meet Sambalat and Tobiah, the human termites, they would have killed him, you see? And guess what? God would have chosen another person to continue the building project. Because God, God didn't send Nehemiah to go and settle uh, quarrels or have Mary in Jerusalem. He said, go there and build the wall. That's it. Had he gone out of that instruction, he would have been killed. And he would have denied himself of God's promise for his own life. Nehemiah knew that God did not send him to attend meetings in Jerusalem, but to build the wall. So he was able to escape the snares of the spiritual termite that wanted his life. A good example, if you're a child of God, a believer, and God has given you the natural talent to sing, okay? Listen, is, remember we said spiritual termites can appear in positive or negative form. If God has given you the natural talent to sing, maybe they sing in your family, so it runs in their blood, and you settle for singing as your own spiritual assignment, guess what? You are destroying yourself piecemeal. Say what? Uh-huh. Go back to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Singing is not a spiritual gift. And we will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ based on the spiritual assignment we have done. Now, God can use your singing along with your uh, spiritual gift. But if you fail to find your spiritual gift, ask God to show you your spiritual gift that you can use for God to bring souls to, to the kingdom and you begin to develop your talent. That's so sad. Francis Chan said, it's like God asking you to cook uh, meatballs and you busy your life with uh, cooking spaghetti. And God will say, listen, I sent you to be a preacher, not to, not to, not to be a, 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 to be cleaning the, the, house, uh, the, the church. It's good to, to be in the, uh, uh, in the cleaning ministry of the church, but you want to find out your specific spiritual gift because the Bible says, Everything that we build will be tested by fire as believers. And the Bible says some build hairs and stubbles. You see, some build 
uh, precious stones, gold. And if your work is tested and it doesn't stand the fire, you will lose the reward. So in this case that we have chosen uh, uh, the, the issue of talent, don't say, oh, I found my spiritual gift. Uh, I have this natural talent. No, because natural talent, as it sounds, is a God-given gift, but it's, it's to all people. A, 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 an unbeliever, they, look at them. They, they sing beautifully all over the world, but that doesn't make them believers. Are you, am I making sense to you? So you want to find your spiritual gift because whatever you build for God with your spiritual gift, that is what is going to be precious stones and gold at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? So don't let your natural talent become a spiritual termite for your life. Let's look at how source natural talent for leadership became a spiritual termite. Because Saul had natural knack to want to lead, you see, rather than obey instructions, that became his undoing. And God replaced Saul with David. If God has called you to do something in the kingdom of God with a specific spiritual gift, and you are focused on something else, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. It will make you uneasy. It will let you know that, no, this is not what I want you to do. But guess what? If you stick to what you like to do, guess what? It's a matter of time. God will move on and choose another person. Because for each spiritual gift, there are souls to be won into the kingdom of God. You see, I, I, I never knew I would be preaching I remember arguing with the Holy Spirit, like, no, I like this. And the Lord said, no, this is what I'm, I've called you to do. And I said, okay. You know, so I'm just, I'm trying to stay on that because the Holy Spirit laid it on my heart that many believers make that mistake. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 13. We we'll start from thir uh, 13 and stop at 14. 1 Samuel 13, 13 to 14. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now, listen, the Lord will have established your kingdom over Israel forever. You see the plan of God for Saul? But now, your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. You see, he was more concerned about people uh, not uh, scattering away and, uh, you know, no, not, not waiting for the burnt offering. So he, he thought, well, I'm the leader, I'm the king. Come on, let's do it. And he, he performed this uh, burnt offering that he was not supposed to do. He had the natural knack to want to lead, and that led him into trouble. To disobey God's province is to be denied God's promise. Some things are exclusively for God to tell you in your life, and your spiritual life is number one of those, among many other things. Because your spiritual life controls your natural life if you're a believer okay so if you disobey god in his province which is the spiritual lesson you have denied yourself of god's promise even your natural life so let's back up again and see what we have done so far why do we need to be able to identify spiritual talent to avoid a spiritual quality from being diluted to avoid a journey from uh, uh, to success from being derailed, to avoid that success from being delayed, to avoid that spiritual integrity and our reputation from being dented, and to avoid being denied divine promises. So, have you identified the spiritual termite in your life and in your environment? What do you plan to do to them? Huh? 
What do you plan to do? You can't just be looking at them. The Bible is very clear what to do. Ephesians 5.11, it says, have nothing to do with unfruitful works of uh, darkness, but rather reprove them. So you have to see by yourself, cut yourself off from every ungodly actions, thoughts, or speech. Now, you know it is imperative for you to be able to identify spiritual termites because now you know how devastating it can be if you don't do something about it. You can't afford to be nice to Satan. Listen now, Satan is not a nice guy. Uh-uh, he's ugly. And he's out to destroy you. And so his spiritual termites are the same. You can't afford to be nice to the enemy. No. Now, if you don't deal with spiritual termites with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, um, through prayer, spiritual termites, they will deal with you if you don't deal with them. Now, if you are here to be a believer, listen, let me tell you straight off. Spiritual termites are eating you up already. It's not they are going to. They are already eating you up. By the, by the fact that you are not even a believer. But you can stop their destruction right here, right now. How? Just wait until I finish praying and follow the link that will come up. And that will take you to want to know Jesus' page of our ministry. Guess what? Jesus is the terminator. Yeah. He is the, he is the one that exterminates all these termites. So you need his expertise. If you really want to stop the destruction that the devil is already doing in your life. Amen. Now, before I let you go, let us pray. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, we need your help. We need your help that we will be careful in our spiritual walk so as not to give room for the devil so that the enemy will not be able to penetrate our spiritual lives to destroy us. Help us, Holy Spirit. And for those who are going to want to know Jesus' page, Father, I pray that more than I can explain, Holy Spirit, you will speak to their heart. For in Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. I will see you next week. If Jesus has not split the sky open.